Hi everybody, I'm Katie. And I'm August. And welcome to because we want to make sure that we keep on our schedule. We're going to be adjusting some of our rounds just a little bit. We're going to cut down to four rounds instead of five tonight. But don't worry, that final round will still win you tickets to Captain America tomorrow night. At sunset, Friday. yeah, Friday night at Sunset Cinema. This is the drive-in movie theater offered by the City of Pearland Parks and Recreation Department, which we are a part of. Um, we're actually from Natural Resources, which is we're kind of adjacent um, we, we take care of the nature stuff. They take care, take care of the, the fun parks and recreation stuff. Um, but tonight we're going to bring you guys trivia. So how do you go, how are you going to play tonight? Um, you should be watching us on one device, hopefully through YouTube tonight and not Facebook and through another device, whether it be a cell phone or a, another computer that you have, um, you will log into kahoot.it or the kahoot app. That's Kahoot.it or the Kahoot app. Once you get logged in, you're going to type in this code right here. And it looks like uh, Feather, Fluff, and Wit are already with us because they've been with us from the start of all these trivia. So once you get logged in, we'll give it just a few minutes to make sure everyone has a chance to log in. Uh, mm -hmm. Keep in mind that when we go through our trivia, you'll be answering on the device that you're not watching us on. Um, you'll have two or four squares, depending on what type of question it is. And those colored squares are your answer buttons. Those answer buttons will correlate with an answer that is on our screen. So make sure you don't press those buttons in advance or it will answer a question. We know with Facebook, there's about a 20 second delay between us live here and what you're seeing on your screen. We're going to assume that there is also a delay through YouTube as well. Um, there might also be some buffering that goes on. So if it looks like we get paused, refresh your screen because the Kahoot will continue to go as it's running on a different program. Uh, so bear with us. If anything gets funky, put it in the comments and hopefully we'll be able to see them. Um, mm -hmm. unfortunately, because we're not doing live on Facebook like normal, we might not be able to interact with your comments as much as we would like to, or as much as we usually do. We're very sad about it, but hopefully, you know, we've got our great communications team here with us tonight. They're going to shout out any good ones. So if you really want to get in touch with us tonight, make sure you make a good, funny comment, a bad pun or a good joke. Yeah, I don't think there's any bad pun. <laughs> you haven't heard Katie get going yet. You may nope. change your mind. Nope. <laughs> so we've got some good, uh, some good numbers here on the screen. We'll give it just a few more minutes. We won't want to take too long on the first round. If anyone joins in late, the code will always be at the bottom of our screen. So you can mm -hmm. join in late. You'll just have to work extra hard to get those answers in. Yes. And remember, when you do answer, the faster you answer, the more points you will get. So it looks like we've got about seven players, eight players coming in hot. Remember that code is 4143376. So we'll give it about 10 more seconds or so, and then we will get started with round number one. Yes, which is, is size matters. So we'll see who measures up in our first round of trivia. All right. It's been about 10 seconds, so are we ready to go? Awesome. We're getting the thumbs up from our communications team. All right, round number one. Right, number one, what is the biggest animal in the animal kingdom? Is it the blue whale, the elephant, the giraffe, or the humpback whale? So the biggest animal in the animal kingdom. Our pictures will not always help you out. They're just there for a little bit of color in the background. So don't take too much stock into it. It might, get, it might trick you oh, out. Oh, it looks like they answered really fast on this oh. one. And oh. You don't get any points, so better to take a guess and get it wrong than not to put an answer in at all. <laughs> Quite a few people who are still figuring out that answer. Counting down. Hopefully that wasn't a buffering issue. Yep. And the correct answer was the bee hummingbird. They're very, very small. You can fit right up the size of a bee. It looks like no shakeup. All right, let's go to question number three. What bird has the longest wingspan? Is it the ostrich, the harpy eagle, the wandering albatross, or the American white pelican. Now, August and I are at the Nature Center every day, well, except for weekends, obviously. Um, but we have a very large model, and there's an American white pelican with a 10-foot wingspan. That's mighty big. Mighty big. 10, 10 feet. I don't know if we've even got 10 feet of camera space here. Maybe. 
<laughs> I'll just walk off set. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> and ostrich. Is- the correct answer is the wandering albatross. So it has the largest wingspan. So greater than 10 feet. Yes. Their wingspan is around 12 feet when they're full grown. Pickups, wit still on top. Uh-huh. Question four. This is a multi. So what bird species has the longest bill? Shoebill stork, a whooping crane, the roseate spoonbill, or the Australian pelican? So that means the multi-select means there are multiple answers. You can select more than one. It should just be one correct answer, though. So just when you click the right answer, hit submit after you hit the right answer. Definitely hit submit. (laughs) So... So we've got the shoe bill, and I, you know, I don't have super big feet, but maybe they used the clown shoes for the shoe bill. Oh, this was a hard one. It was. America, I mean, Australian pelicans. So pelicans are very large birds in general. Because mm-hmm. everything is bigger, everything's bigger in. <laughs> All right, let's go to the next question. All right, number five. What is the largest butterfly in the world? Is it the Queen Alexandra's bird wing? Is it the giant swallowtail, Barbie mariposa, or the emperor butterfly? Now, the picture is of a, which is the atlas moth, not a butterfly. They're saying that even a butterfly's, a butterfly's wings can, can start a wind that will create a hurricane or something like that. Like an old wives' tale. Indeed. So this would be a pretty big hurricane. It would. It would. It, Hopefully that's not too soon. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Louisiana is doing well to recover. And the correct answer was the. So she gets the name bird wing or he, because their wings are almost the size of a bird's wings at eight to nine inches long. Some big shakeups here. Blue roses now on top. Mm-hmm. Coverter and Chanty. All right. What is the, but, but, oh, sorry. What <laughs> bird species has the shortest bill? Was it the indigo bunting, the purple finch, the superb fairy wren? Due to be superbly named. Mm-hmm. I mean, pretty tough. Um, purple finch. Mm-hmm. And he, he, if it's lilac shade of purple, it's lilacking in bill. <laughs> <laughs> so correct answer is the night jar. So only one person got it correct. So bravo to you. Oh, Cove Burner, you lived up to your name. Excellent job. Question seven. On this question, size really does matter. All derpy like this guy. Yep. I think we just caught him in a bit of a wink. Looks almost like um, Lucille Bluth with the... <laughs> that she always does, like that one wink. Now, emus are rather large birds. Very curious. They like to look at everything. Cassowaries. They are. They are. Both from uh, down south. And the correct answer was... An ostrich. Coburter Drake. Mm-hmm. Still doing good on the scoreboard here. Largest land animal. Is it the blue whale, the walrus, African elephant, or the white rhino? Read your questions carefully before you put your answers in. Mm-hmm. The largest land animal. Now, the, the grizzly bear is not going to help you out either, although he is looking pretty cute. He says hello. Mm-hmm. Looks like he's probably going after some fish, working his way up to being the largest land animal. <laughs> now, I remember one of our questions, we had blue whale. They were the largest something. Mm, yeah, they were the largest something. So maybe, maybe that's the right answer. Whale? Whale. <laughs> <laughs> All right, the answer was African elephant. You had to read the question carefully. Land animal. Both the blue whale and the walrus are considered marine mammals. Your head, how much a bull African elephant can weigh? Ooh, um, I believe they can weigh around 14,000 pounds, which is very, very, very. And that's the biggest of the big. Most are a little bit lighter. Question 10. What bird species has the large field of view? Is the field sparrow, the red-shouldered hawk, the great horned owl, or the woodcock? 
Now, we said the largest field of you. So I think, you know, obviously the field sparrow, it's got the, depending on what size field it is. We never do anything to trick you guys. Either. Never. Never. Now, great horned owls, I know they have uh, 14. Vertebrae and can turn their head 270 degrees, which is pretty good field pretty of view good. in my book. They can give you that wink in <laughs> forward, sideways, in behind. So, you know, red shoulder hawks, they're birds of prey. Mm -hmm. Woodcocks are kind of forest. So, interesting choices. But the woodcock is. Indeed. So, three of you guys got it right. Looks like. Oh, some shakeups on the second. Coverter though, hanging on to that thrown up. Got our last question coming up for round one. What is the lightest bird species? Is it the scissor tail flycatcher, the bee hummingbird, the ostrich, or the eastern screech owl? Now, even the largest bird, though, is probably a lot lighter than some of its smaller mammal counterparts because mm -hmm. bird bones are hollow them with the ability to fly. Mm -hmm. But what if they're a non-flighted bird like oh, the ostrich? Interesting question. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Things to ponder on. Things to ponder on. <gasps> oh! So close. We almost got everybody. <laughs> the smallest of the bird species. Yes. Alright, so let's check out our podium here. In third place, we have from a very small insect. It is the bee, and it is honey. September is National Honey Month. Mm -hmm. Excellent, so fresh code. That code number is 3791293. And we'll start brand new round all over again with 10 questions all about honey. honey. For National Honey Month, of I didn't actually know it was National Honey Month until we started searching up stuff for the, the trip. Mm -hmm. I did not know it was either. I'm not a big honey eater. Oh. Honey's never been one of those things I really just, I'm like, oh, let me put some honey on stuff. But uh, Whataburger's Chicken Honey Butter Biscuit, on the other <laughs> hand. But I think it's more of the butter the part butter. that I like on that one. You put honey in most things, though, and it, it does some that's okay. pretty good. Okay. That's pretty good. I think next week we have a program uh, scheduled for live called Scoop on Poo, and um, we'll be making a recipe for different types of herbivore or or poop, and I think honey is one of the ingredients. So mm -hmm. these are edible, uh, like no poops with honey. honey. Exactly. Honey doesn't make that better. No. Tanya. And if it is the same Tanya, thank you so much for joining. <laughs> so give just a couple more seconds. Any more uh, people who are going to join us in for round number two? Which is all about honey. Um, it might be lagging because of all the connections we've got running through here. Um, mm -hmm. Unfortunately, technical difficulties do happen. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, try refreshing if it starts to lag a little bit, either on the video or on the Kahoot.it uh, or app. We've heard in the past that the Kahoot app runs a little bit smoother than mm -hmm. the web browser. So if you have a chance to download the app, you can definitely give that a try as well. Yes, and the app is free. Yes. So it looks like we've been at the same 10 players for a bit. So we can probably go ahead and get started. Here we go. Bum, bum, bum. Oh. Question one. How many flowers must honeybees tap to make one pound of honey? Is it two million flowers, one million flowers, 50,000 flowers, or 500 flowers? That's a lot of number. Yeah. I mean, th th no wonder they're called busy bees. For one pound. Okay, so if I think one pound weight, you know, how much do like the little bears weigh? They're, they're not a pound, right? Like They're not a pound. The honey is dense. That's true. That's true. Bees too. They're not just busy. This is where the, uh, the metric system comes into play because they oh. and not by ounces, which doesn't tell us anything. Exactly. 
metric pe- any if there's any uh, uh, metric system people, tell us how much. Anyways, yeah, we'd love to know. All right, about five seconds left to make sure you choose that answer. Let's All see right. what it is. Two million, and we stumped everybody with that one. It takes two million flowers to make one pound of honey. Mm-hmm. See why everyone is encouraged to plant pollinator plants and flowers mm-hmm. in your yards and your garden. Yeah, it makes it a lot easier for those bees. Wait, congratulations for being on top, even though you got it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's go to the next question. <laughs> All right, what is mead? Is it honey beer? Another name for nectar, honey wine, or what did bees drink? Now, when I was in school, you know, which we just have started, you know, go back to school season, everyone wanted that five star like mead notebook. So why is that not an answer choice? I mean, that's what that's what mead is, right? You got to blend that up. They were talking drinks might be familiar. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Possibly. Ten answers on the board. Oh, it is indeed honey wine. Honey wine. All right, some shakeups on the board. Feather fluff, followed by golden roses, and then green mum. All right, question three. Which scotch is made with honey? And I wish I'd add Katie answer this so I didn't have to say all these words. Lava. Glava? Glava. Glava. We don't know. But which Scottish liqueur is made with honey? Hmm. Is Lagavulin from Ron Swanson not an option? <laughs> Um, Let's see. Familiar with it, I know from my research that a cocktail made with the answer is called a rusty nail, I believe. Mm. We've got any uh, drinking connoisseurs uh-huh. here, experts in the field. Yeah. I mean, with COVID, I have experts in that field. <laughs> <laughs> All right, the correct answer. So apologies to any Scots out there for our butchering the correct answer yes feather fluff still a lead but it uh-huh. is close on the scoreboard mm-hmm. all right question number four how many sides does each honeycomb have is it six four seven or eight think back to your geometry days no what are we hunting is the honeycomb because when it comes off the, the honeycomb it's like it's a rectangle that's too tricky so is it <laughs> how many it's the, the cell so each oh, honeycomb the c- how many okay. sides does that sell? I'm very visual. And so, I mean, I could, I could see this and count it for you guys, but then you all <laughs> wouldn't be able to see the picture. Hmm. All right. Six sides is what a honeycomb has, and that would be a hexagon? Yes. yes correct. Hexagon. Math majors are not us. <laughs> <laughs> all Green right, mums moved up. A lot of moving up on the board. All right. So, how much honey does the average honey bee make in her lifetime? Is it one gallon, one tablespoon, a half teaspoon, or one teaspoon? Those are some small answers for a lifetime. Yeah. And they had to go to a million, two uh, million flowers to make a pound of honey, which is much bigger than a teaspoon and all of that. So. I mean, they really are very busy. And I noticed in the question it says her lifetime. Is that because all worker bees are female? Women get it done. I mean, they do. They do. Last month, we actually just passed the 200th uh, anniversary of women having the right to vote. So, (laughs) woohoo! To vote, you can in Texas until October. I can't remember the exact date. But you can still register to vote at votetexas.gov. All right, is, the correct answer is a half teaspoon. In her whole life, only a half teaspoon of honey. Yeah, but a lifespan for a worker bee, especially in the summer, is only about six weeks. So wow. in six weeks, she's going to make about half a teaspoon. Mm-hmm. A couple of shakeups on the board. The golden roses moved up. Mm-hmm. Got that lag fix, didn't you? Yeah, there we go. <laughs> Question six, how long have bees been producing honey from flowering plants? Million years, 10 to 20 million years, 1,000 years, or 50 years. So how long have bees been producing honey from flowering plants? Mm -hmm. 
So I know that in the tombs of Egypt, they have found pots and jars of honey. So if you are an amateur Egyptologist, um, you might be able to do some quick math and figure out how long ago um, that was. Okay. Uh, so but beyond Egypt, actually mm -hmm. in the fossil million years, honey goes back. Now, I know that some tombs in Egypt was still good when mm -hmm. we got it. I don't know if would have made it 10 to 20,000 years, million years. Yeah, I, I probably wouldn't have tested it. Might be a sh Yeah. All right, a couple more shakeups. Golden Rose is still in first place, though. On a streak as well. Mm -hmm. All right, number seven. How many flowers does a honeybee visit during one collection trip? Is it 50 to 100, 150, or 500? So how many flowers did they visit in one collection trip? So we've gotten a... You could say, cure. what is it? It's, it's not exactly ale, but... Uh, it cures what ails you. <laughs> if there's a honey ale, couple answers coming in quick. Waiting on just a few. Mm -hmm. And like we, we were talking about Mary Poppins while we were waiting for everything to work, and uh, you know, a spoonful of sugar makes medicine go down. Honey is sweet. Probably full is, is a spoonful of honey your actual medicine? Mm hmm Could be. All right. Let's see. Let's see. <gasps> True. The correct answer is that, yes, honey is medicinal. Um, I believe it started with the Greeks. The ancient Greeks used honey. Um, that's why we still have, like, honey face mask and things. It has, um, uh, like, antibacterial properties. Mm -hmm. It's also why it lasts so long in the Egyptian tombs. There you go. Excellent. You can also use it regionally to uh, possibly sure. help with allergies. Yeah. Houston people, you know what's up. Mm -hmm. you got to have that. Sh uh, uh, I forgot the name of the local honey place. Ooh. Oh, we'll have guys. to think. Uh, you type it in the comments yep. if you know any <laughs> regional know or is. local honey <laughs> vendors within this. the Houston area. Let us know. And we'll go to the next question while we're still thinking. <laughs> All right, number nine. What is the worth of pollination that occurs from honeybees in the U.S. each year? Is it $1 million? Is it $10 million? Is it 500000 from honeybees in the U.S. each year? So this is in the agricultural field. So without farmers having to go and pollinate their own crops, uh, honeybees take care of that for them. So how much money is that worth every year? Yep. They're free uh, laborers. There are actually some companies that rent honeybees to farmers so that their bees will pollinate. Uh, and the bees that do that for almond trees, like in California, mm -hmm. they charge extra because honey made from almonds tastes awful. Oh. So they can't use Oh, so they that's charge amazing. More. Is it because the almonds have any, I know the almonds have, it's a, it's, I think it's arsenic. Cyanide? It's arsenic or cyanide. So I wonder maybe so. Maybe. All right. It looks like the correct answer was twenty billion dollars. B. Get it? <laughs> ah. <laughs> so again, very much why uh, bees are important, and we want to save our pollinators. So golden roses uh, back up top. Green mums has fallen down just a little bit. Mm -hmm. Got one more question to see how we end mm -hmm. up. And it is a true or false. Bees can produce different flavors of honey. So true or false. If you were listening to us ramble. <laughs> it's your funsies. Makes you think, do, if they have different flavors, do they also come in different colors? Ooh, that's a great question. Because I don't know if I've ever seen honey in different colors. It's always that golden yellow, like liquid gold. But of course, liquid gold we know here in Texas is oil. And let's assume the correct answer. What flavor of honey would you want? Ah. Uh. Um, when there's a mix, so they just kind of have a general uh, flavor. Most of the honey that we have in our area is actually clover honey. Um, but there can make honey, like if you make honey from eucalyptus, it has like a menthol flavor mm. or like from blue blueberries. Uh, you mm. don't want almond honey, though. Yeah, apparently. exactly. Does it taste yeah. good? Almond milk, though, I've heard good things. <laughs> All right, 
Let's see who is in third place. Green Mom, congratulations. And in second, we've got Feather Fluff. And in first place, we have Golden Roses. Congratulations. Congratulations. Our runners up, we've got Crochet. I'm going to guess that's Crochet Queen. Uh huh. Uh, and COVID Cove Burner. Excellent job, guys. Then we're going to flip over to round three here in just a second. And we changed up the order of the rounds um, because we did have those technical difficulties earlier. So um, this next round, I believe, is birds. Is, yes, we're getting the heads up. Yes, our next round is birds. So Cove Birder might have an unfair advantage. <laughs> Who knows? On the cusp, on the Cove of Greatness. <laughs> Excellent. And this will be our second to last round. And our last round will be all about the movie Captain America, which you will be able to win free tickets to Sunset Cinema, which is the drive-in movie theater uh, produced by uh, Pearland Parks and Recreation. So we've got our third round up and ready. The code for that round is 695-7038. So if you are trying to win those tickets for the final round, or if you know somebody who is, you've got plenty of time to log in. Uh, mm -hmm. But make sure you are ready to go at the start of that so you get a chance to answer all of the questions. Yep. And if you've never heard of Sunset Cinema, let us tell you about it. <laughs> uh, but no, Sunset Cinema is a very fun event that is socially distanced. Um, people are able to park in the recreation and auditorium center parking lot and you can have up to 10 people in your car and they have a giant inflatable movie screen and you're able to hear the movie through the audio in your car through a radio frequency there's a really fun pre-show um you know different things going on pre-show um that's also through the screen um but then once the movie starts when it gets dark that's when all the fun really does happen because you get to enjoy the old timey drive-in feel um while still enjoying being out of the house for a little bit. So Friday night, um, Friday nights within the city of Pearland. Katie mm -hmm. shouts that out because Educatie videos are the preview. So she's just do doing a little self-promotion there. No shame, no shame. I wasn't going to mention it, but <laughs> since you brought it, it up. It's uh, food truck's also on site. I can tell you when I went, I got me a nice funnel cake and it was exciting. Ooh, I haven't had a funnel cake in a very long time. Yeah. I was going to get one at the rodeo this year and... Unfortunately, I have to wait till next year, but there well, will always you be. You can go to Sunset Cinema. I could, you know, I, I definitely could. I definitely could. So it looks like we've got about 10 players. Linji with the lovely cat emoji. Love it. Feather Fluff, Crochet Granny, Wit, Coverter, Tanya, Mandola. Uh, board? Board. Sorry if we butchered it. Uh, Green Mom. Is it a and, play on bird? Do we have oh, two contenders? And Golden Roses. <laughs> All right, let's get started with round three. Bum, bum, bum. Which may actually say round four, which is fine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Question one. What little bird was mocked for claiming the sky was falling? Was it Chicken Little, Grumpy Bird, Little Red Hen, or the Roadrunner? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now, if I think about the sky falling, I might say um, a couple you know, get bleeped, which would be Roadrunner. That was a fast one. <laughs> yeah, it was, just like Roadrunner. <laughs> Chicken Little, I mean, the Roadrunner had some things falling from the sky toward him. That said, the sky is falling. This place. <laughs> Followed by Covert or Imprint. With, so true or false, there are over 9,000 species of bird. True or false. They are not all represented in this picture. <laughs> <laughs> so I believe these are mostly species of finch. I think so. Not all of them. Yes, I mean, most of them are finches. It is true. There are definitely over 9,000 species of bird. Some switch ups here on the board. Mm -hmm. Excellent. All right, question number three Is it that it's made out of mud? Does it create a wall for protection? Is it made out of sticks from only one species of tree or on a branch all day? Mm -hmm. I mean, that's what it looks like they're doing, right? Yeah, he looks happy. Mm -hmm. Now, what's really cool about these birds is you can actually tell uh, if it's male or female by the color of their irises, which is the color. If you guys the wrong answer. So their horns are also hollow. Mm -hmm. 
want to carry something like that on my head all the time. No, especially if it wasn't hollow, it would be very, very heavy. But just like we said in our previous are usually in lighter weight because their bones are hollow as uh, horns or casks on top of their head. Correct answer was it creates a wall for protection. So literally what the female bird does is she goes inside a nest cavity inside a tree and she uses her own feces and sticks and leaves and builds a wall to sit on her eggs and the male will come and bring her and the baby's food. So if something happens to the male, the whole family unfortunately does not survive. We may have some moms feeling like that with COVID right now. Mm -hmm. Can't leave the house. Exactly. <laughs> Looks like Tawny's in first place, followed by Crochet Granny and then Wit. So congratulations, guys. Moving on up. Question number four. What species of parrot is the most talkative? Is it the African gray parrot, the cockatoo, the lovebird, or the emu? So it's the ability to speak that separates. No, I'm just um, with <laughs> with birds. Um, you know, they, some species are able to lots of screaming children, and they're usually at frequencies I don't want to hear. <laughs> So, but what about birds? And if it's a frequencies we can't hear, then why do we hear so many birds tweedle eating early in the morning? That's a good point. Mm -hmm. It's not like a good owl. Usually nice and quiet. They're up at night. Don't want to be bothered during the daytime. I just have a question. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> that got our communications team. I yep. didn't even think that was that good of a joke. <laughs> Who else thought it was good? <laughs> Let us know in the comments. <laughs> Turning heads here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. The answer was true. They can make noises at frequencies that we cannot hear. But they do make a lot at frequencies we do hear. Uh-huh. So Tony is still in the lead, followed by B Border Bird and <laughs> Cove Birder just behind. All right. All right. What is the only species of bird that can fly backwards. Is it the Mississippi kite, the red-shouldered hawk, a bald eagle, or the hummingbird? Hmm. I wonder what the benefit of being able to fly backwards is. I mean, if you miss your turn, it's going to save you a little bit of time. <laughs> Excuse me, your exit was back there. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. GPS or not. Oh, everyone got it right! Good job. The correct answer was hummingbird. That's where we got the idea for helicopters from, actually, was studying hummingbirds. I did not know that. They're the only birds that can hover as well. That is amazing. Back up. Yes, yes. They got to put their hand on the hand rest and look behind it, too. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Tanya's still in first place. Question number seven. What is the largest flying bird? Is it the ostrich, the albatross, the whistling duck, or the white pelican? We have talked about several of these if you mm -hmm. tuned in with us for an earlier round. So you might have some choices to, that you're, you're familiar with. Mm -hmm. We all have choices to make. And y'all have, hopefully, if you've been playing some of the other rounds, maybe an easier choice. Now, I remember at the Nature Center, that white pelican we have has a 10-foot wingspan. That's huge. When they come in and land on the pond, which they'll be coming soon if it ever gets cold again. <laughs> um, but when they land, they are massive birds. I don't know that much could be much bigger than that and still be able to take off and fly. Yeah. The correct answer is albatross. So slightly bigger than our white pelicans. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Their wingspan is around 12 feet in length, which is very, very big. Hey, right, Tanya's still holding it down in first place. Followed by Cove, Birder, and Wit. Question eight. What is the largest bird of prey? Is it the falcon, the osprey, the cinerous vulture, or the sparrowhawk? So if you're not from talons, like you see here, a beak that is curved for eating meat. All right. The correct answer was cinerous vulture. Vultures are birds of prey, even though they are scavenging birds of prey. Mm -hmm. There are some other birds of prey that will scavenge. Uh, the caracara is another. Yep. You'll frequently find caracaras with vultures. 
Pickups at the bottom. Tanya is holding on strong. Mm -hmm. Number nine, true or false? All birds have bladders. True or false? I hate to say it, but at the Nature Center, there's lots of birds, and our cars do end up getting pelted quite a bit. And we can confirm the larger the bird, the larger the poop. Mm -hmm. Sometimes those pelicans come in, you can see it coming, you got to run for cover. Yes. <laughs> Duck and cover. You do that with the ducks, too. <laughs> Especially so, those Muscovies. Yes. But do they have bladders? I know that their poo is very bladders. I know that their poo is very watery. So, I mean, it would just make sense because since it's a watery, I mean, there's liquid coming out. So speaking of poop, next week we'll be going <laughs> live for Scoop on Poop. So we'll actually be teaching all the different types of animal creating poop live on camera. <laughs> Create edible poo at home with your kiddos <laughs> as far as birds go though they don't have bladders nope the only species of bird that does have a bladder is the ostrich so what happens is all of their fecal and they do have kidneys so their kidneys are still filtering out all of the uric acid from their body it just takes it to their cloaca which is just a universal vent and all of it comes out as a solid form which is why in their poo you see a white part and a black part the white part is the uric acid which comes from the kidneys and the black part is the fecal material which comes from their intestines so deep science <laughs> sorry if it was loud <laughs> all right let's go to the next question which is our final question of this round what bird has the largest egg in proportion to its body size is it the ostrich the kiwi, the dodo, or the morning dove. Ooh. So not the largest egg, but the largest egg in proportion to its body size. Mm -hmm. Could be both. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, ostriches are quite large. Their eggs are quite large. So proportion to body size, if I do some of the meme math here, I mean, I might go with the ostrich. I mean, the dodo, I mean, if we look at, they, they did go extinct. Maybe they went extinct trying to lay all very <laughs> massive eggs. We'll see about 10 more seconds to get those final answers in. In the morning, oh, looks like we got all of our answers in. <laughs> so the correct answer, which is a bird native to New Zealand. Uh, in x-rays, you should, you should really Google an x-ray picture of a kiwi with an egg it takes up its entire body cavity mm -hmm. so i think baby kiwis are hatched out and they already weigh like a pound mm -hmm. which is a lot for a bird yes which helps them out in the long run because they're able to defend themselves from birth all right let's see who won this round of trivia in third place we had wit and in second place we had cove birder and in first, we had Tanya. Nine out of ten correct answers. Excellent. Runners up, Green Mum and Feather Fluff. So excellent job, guys. Excellent. <laughs> All right. We're getting ready to move into our last and final round for tonight, which is Captain America. This round is for our grand prize of the tickets for Sunset Cinema this Friday night. So if you are super interested in those, make sure you uh, do your best to get all the answers correct. Um, if you are the winner of that, be sure to message us with your username on the DFNC pa Facebook page. All righty, everybody who's ready for some trivia. All right, for this final round, I have gone full Captain America mode, got my mask on, and we're going to start uh, shooting the questions to you guys in just a second. <laughs> so make sure you guys type in that code. It is 4070903. And if you are wondering, I wonder where she got that mask. Um, had it for several years. Did I borrow it from a small child? No, <laughs> it is my mask. Why? Because Captain America and Steve Rogers are both one and the same. Amazing. 
it, it helps me get my house cleaner faster. <laughs> I'm able to get a stronger scrub on anything that I'm cleaning. Sometimes you just need that superhero power. Exactly, exactly. And I mean, what are we if we don't have superheroes, especially now? Does make it a little bit hard to read the questions in turn, but I'm going <laughs> to suffer through this for you guys. Comedy is pain and pain is comedy. You know. <laughs> You've probably experienced a little bit of both with us tonight. <laughs> probably. And we apologize if our jokes have been painful to listen to over and over <laughs> and over again. But we promised we wouldn't sing tonight, so we did not. And by we, I mean me. Always hurt. <laughs> <laughs> All right, looks like we've got nine players playing. We've got Crochet, Granny, Ma oh, it moved over. Um, so Lynn G, <laughs> Wit, Coverter, Green Mums, Mike, Mike. I'm, I, I don't want to mess up your last name. I'm sorry, Mike. Um, Tanya, America's A, Feather Fluff, and Golden Roses. We'll give it just another second since we had someone else pop in, and then we will get started for this prize-winning round. Yes. So if you are the winner of this final round, you will win a free ticket to Sunset Cinema to watch none other than Captain America, hence the garb. Um, in order to receive your winnings, um, you can send um, the Dolores Fenwick Nature Center um, a Facebook message, and we'll be able to make sure that you were actually the person that won, and we will coordinate getting those tickets to you um, before the movie on Friday evening. Yeah. When you send us that message, make sure you send the username that you use to take this quiz mm -hmm. with us. Um, so I think we're going to go ahead and get started with this last and final round. Excellent. As we get started, I'm going to give you guys a brief hint. The movie that we're showing is Captain America, The Winter Soldier. Our quiz is the first Captain America, ah. the first Avenger. All right. First question is, what city does the movie start in? Is it Tonesburg, Norway, Pearland, Texas, New York, New York, or Cambridge, England? So where does it start? I mean, don't, out, don't count out Pearland. We've got our own Captain America. dun da 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 <laughs> Punching Nazis all day long. Yes. No time for that in Pearland. <laughs> all right. Now, if I'm thinking about the movie, I thought that Steve Rogers was from Brooklyn. So why are they in New York, New York? Oh, they weren't. <laughs> they were in Tonesburg, Norway. All right. So Tanya's got in first place, followed by Green Mums and Mike. Maybe. Maybe. I, don't, I really just don't want to butcher your last name, Mike. <laughs> I don't have I, I confidence in myself. All right. In here. What were the Germans looking for in the casket? Was it an infinity? Tesseract? Vibranium? Or meow meow? <laughs> <laughs> if you watch the, uh, the, the Avengers or any of the Marvel movies, meow meow does make sense. But the correct pronunciation is Mjolnir. <laughs> which is Thor's hammer. Which, by the way, uh, Captain America is able to pick up in one of the movies. He's actually able to pick it up. Super cool. He's able to wield the power of Thor He's and smart. America. They were looking for the Tesseract. Blue Infinity Stone that Loki has. Is it an Infinity Stone? I thought it was inside of there. No. Maybe. It's blue. <laughs> it's blue. All Either right, let's way, blue through blue. this one and go to the next question. <laughs> ah, lots of shakeups on the board mm -hmm. here. All right, question number three. Who comes to Steve's rescue when he was getting beat up in an alley? Was it Nick Fury? Was it Dr. Erskine? Was it Howard Stark? Or James Bucky Barnes? Now, which alley? Which time? I feel like he mentions he's been beat up in several alleys. I, I mean, you know, growing up in Brooklyn, especially when Steve Rod or yes, when Steve Rogers grew up, it was probably pretty dicey. <laughs> I mean, Brooklyn's come through a lot of changes lately. You know, they've gentrified a lot. <laughs> but, you know, this was a long time ago. <laughs> I don't remember a Dr. Eric scene. I do remember Howard Stark being in the movie, who's the father of none other than Tony Stark. All right, it was James Bucky Barnes, his best friend. Of course it was Bucky. <laughs> All right, Mike's in first place. Followed. Moving and shaking here. Uh-huh, moving and shaking. Question four. 
who caught Steve when he was trying to enlist under another name? Was it Dr. Abraham Erkstein, Colonel Phillips, Bucky, or Peggy Carter? Hmm. So who called him out? I mean, if Bucky's his best friend, he would know. Maybe he typed in, you know, Stephen Rogers instead of Steve <laughs> Rogers. Back in that day, I don't know if anyone was typing. Oh, that's true. That's true. They had to write everything out. Hmm. All right. And the correct answer was Dr. Erskine. Got some pretty split answers here. Uh huh. You guys are trying hard though. Yes. All right, Covert are in first place. All right, number five. Where is the secret location of the Scientific Strategic Reserve, the SSR? Is it in Brooklyn and the Brooklyn Conservatory, the Brooklyn Zoo, or the Brooklyn Library? I'm gonna take a stab at it. I think it's in Brooklyn. It, it, sounds like it might be in Brooklyn. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It might be onto something. Yep. Mm. It, was it in Brooklyn with the the Tesseract in the <laughs> conservatory? We'll do some clue here. Or is it in Brooklyn Antiques? It was in the back. He wants those tickets. Yep. Those. Or she. Yep. Question six. What is the code used to get into the secret room? Mm -hmm. Yes, but I Yes, but I always carry a weapon. Yes, but I always carry a pin, or yes, but I always carry an umbrella. Hmm. So, the so, correct answer, yes, but I always carry an umbrella. There you go. So, Texans in summer, you understand that struggle? Mm -hmm. No, I mean, you just kind of like... <laughs> <laughs> what else would he have been injected with? America's A, the single winner on that question. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> All right, going into question eight. Who helps Dr. Erskine with the procedure? Is it Howard Stark, Tony Stark, Dr. Zola, or Bruce Banner? Mm. Now, with all of these, I mean, Captain America is an Avenger. Both Tony Stark and Bruce Banner are very Avengers as well. Maybe they were there to help him. <laughs> I didn't trick you, most of you guys. <laughs> it was Howard Stark, who is Tony Stark's dad. Oh, no movement No this movement. Time. Everyone's holding it down. Just a couple more questions to get right, mm -hmm. though. All right. What is the name of Steve's love in the movie? So not what he loves, but who he loves. Uh, is it Diana Prince, Natasha Romanoff, Peggy Carter, or Rhea Hill? Mm -hmm. So who's his lady? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I thought it would be Lady Liberty <laughs> being Captain America. But the correct answer is Peggy mm -hmm. Carter. Yes. Up here on question 10, we did have a total of 11 mm -hmm. in this round. What does Captain America plane? Does he crash it into the Arctic? Does he turn he donates it to science or he flies to America. Now, you know, Samuel L. Jackson is Nick Fury. So maybe he put it, made it a party plane and called it like snakes on a plane instead. <laughs> Don't want these Nazis on nope, the plane. Nope. <laughs> so maybe he didn't fly it to America. He didn't want to bring Nazis to America with it. Hmm. He donated it to science. They could learn one question to win those tickets. Right, about five more seconds, guys. The heat is on. The correct answer is he crashes it into the Arctic to keep it from exploding. Yep. He goes down with the ship like a true captain. All right, Cove Birder. It's still close on the scoreboard, though, so mm -hmm. there's still a chance. All right, what year is it when Captain America wakes up? Is it 1999, 2020, 1968, or 2011? So he wakes up after a cold sleep. He woke up in 2020. He went back to sleep and said, not today. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> nope. <laughs> back in that plane. Yep. <laughs> 1999. 
you know, we thought that, you know, 1999 to 20 or to, to 2000 was going to be like 2020. <laughs> Hopefully that's right. In second place, we have America's A. And in first place, you've got drum roll, Coburter. Congratulations on winning those tickets to Sunset Cinema tonight. Uh, make sure that you send with Nature Center Facebook page. That's a lot of words. Uh, make sure you put in your actual name and your username here so that we can make sure that we get those tickets in your name. Uh, to everybody else who participated with us tonight, thank you for participating. We thank you. Hope you had a good time. We thank you for sticking around despite our technical difficulties here at the beginning. Mm -hmm. um, we like to say that each week gets better with our stuff, but sometimes things are out of our control. We also want to thank our awesome communications team uh, and other parks people who helped us out with our quiz tonight. Um, we will check back in comments for anything that popped up. If you guys had any questions, said mm -hmm. anything, we'll be responding to those over the next day or so. Yep. So thank you guys again for sticking it out uh, through those technical difficulties and uh, our amazing humor <laughs> this <laughs> evening. Um, woo! My mask is a little bit loose. But Are you sure it's not a little bit too tight? <laughs> <laughs> I should have put it on earlier. It might have squeezed my brain a little bit better. <laughs> so, But anyway, thank you guys so much for joining us. We're going to skip our survey for tonight because we are a little bit later than normal with our trivia. Um, but we just want to say thank you guys so much. We do this once a month. So if you just stumbled upon it, we'll see you guys next month in October. And on the second Wednesday of yes, the month. Yes, second Wednesday of the month. And, it, you know, it's before Halloween, so... You never know what we might be wearing then. If so, someone in this room has a favorite holiday. So, we'll maybe. see. We'll yep. see. All right. But thanks, everybody, for tuning in. Everyone have a great night. And Cove Barter, enjoy your movie on Friday. Yep. Excellent. Bye, everybody. Bye. <laughs>